Okay, so that's a beautiful scripture reading. Reading, I like those verses. Now this morning, my sermon is going to be about Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. And let me, let me go on to speak. Those three were angels of the Lord. And they came and asked, where was your wife? Abraham said, my wife is over there in the tent. And then one of them said, we will come back here at the same time next year. And your wife, Sarah, will have borne a son. But Sarah, who was in the tent, took this all in, listening. And Abraham and Sarah were already well past the age of fertility. So Sarah began to laugh. They thought, what? I am already worn out, and my husband is old. We cannot enjoy that type of relationship. And then the Lord told Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? When I said that next year she would be bearing a son. Then the Lord told Abraham, She's laughing. Is anything too hard for the Lord to accomplish? I will be back at the same time next year, and Sarah will have borne a son. Sarah heard this again and was filled with fear, and so she lied and said, no, I did not laugh. However, the Lord said, yes, you did. Isn't that a cool scripture story? It means that God can do absolutely anything, right? We can't doubt that at all. You know, God decided that Sarah, this ancient woman, would bear a son, and so Sarah did bear a son, right? You know, but also this morning when John was reading the scriptures, he was talking about how Abraham was so congenial and showed such hospitality Right? You know, the Bible is full of so many examples of hospitality. We are supposed to show hospitality to other people. We're supposed to be welcoming them in, taking care of them, giving them foods and places to sleep, and just being a welcoming people. Can you imagine if those three folks showed up without warning? If they just kind of appeared? Then, you know, can you imagine having to scurry around and cook and get things ready for them? Well, in biblical times, it was a very strong cultural norm to, do, to portray hospitality. These days, though, we demand prior notice so that we can buy the food, we can cook the meals, we can get the showers ready, we can change our clothes, we can look our very best before our guests arrive, right? It's a lot of work when you got a guest coming. We would never stand for somebody just showing up unannounced saying, can I stay at your house for a week? We would not be very accepting of that, right? Maybe some of you remember, maybe some of you don't, but I feel like so very many years ago, the deaf community didn't have any TTYs, we didn't have video phones or text abilities. So it was really hard to communicate and some families who didn't have kids meant they didn't have any phones so that because they didn't have hearing children, so the parents didn't have phones. And deaf people would just show up at each other's houses without um, letting anybody know. They'd just knock on the door and whatever I had on, however my hair was, whatever my house looked like, whatever my clothes looked like, filthy or not, there they were. So I'd just invite them in. That's not a good idea any longer. We all like to have some prior knowledge. But this morning, part of my message that I would like to talk about are these verses I just read. The part where it seems that Abraham and Sarah had backed into, had run into a wall. They were too old. There's no way they could physically bear children any longer. They had 
come to an insurmountable wall. But they both knew that they were well past the age of childbearing. And Sarah thought it was pretty humorous. But then one of those angels said, well, next year you're going to be a born baby boy. Sarah's Saw, all Sarah saw was the wall. And Sarah didn't have any idea that God had put a door into that wall. The wall was her age, was the old age. God had put a little door in there that she could open. And the Lord was ready to open that door. I, let me show you a picture. Josh, can you bring that up? Okay. Thanks. Isn't that a beautiful door? I like seeing the light coming in through the, through the door. That's pretty cool. So, you know, Sarah truly was very old and she did bear a son. It came to pass. And after Sarah passed away, Abraham married again and had six more children. Abraham and Sarah confronted, faced that wall of age. It's a fact, but God was able to open the door so that they could come through and then their family increased and the generations flourished. As we become older, we face the same type of walls because of our age. Some of the walls you think only would happen to other people. If you were the same age as I am, I'm 59, or if you're older, maybe you're having the same experience. Sometimes you start to think about, where did this time go? Where? You know, some people really look forward to retirement, but they forget that retirement means that we're getting older. And as we get older, that means we'll have more aches and pains and droopiness, right? Sometimes we can be restless. I, I have restless legs and my hips ache all night long. And I wake up at like 4.48 in the morning. You know, some of us have arthritis, our fingers and our hands get stick and swollen. We are achy in all of our joints. It's no fun, right? Our eyesight starts to diminish. You know, those of us who can hear have diminished hearing. Sometimes we forget what we came in here for. Like, why did I come into this kitchen anyway? Or we think, what am I doing here? Sometimes you forget where you put your glasses. You know, I've got thousands of pairs of glasses and I still can't find them when I need them. We think that these kind of things are going to be happening maybe to our parents or our grandparents, maybe our aunts and uncles, but not to us. And then one day we wake up and what do you know? Yep, we're old. And yep, I've got pains and aches. And yep, I'm starting to get forgetful. And yep, I don't see as well as I used to. And then we start to laugh and think, can I do these kind of things? No way. That's only for young people when something comes up. There's no way I can do whatever that task is. So we have hit several walls that tell us we can't do what we need to do any longer. Those walls tell us we're worthless, that we're old. Those walls tell us that they don't need us anymore, that we're unnecessary. We're just going to have to be wait until we die because our life is over. Well, I want to tell you something different. What we should be thinking and feeling and living is that we are still here. We are still worthwhile. 
God can still use us and God will open doors for us to walk through continually. Life is not over. While we have breath, life is not over at all. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 and 16 are pretty cool. You know, I can read this, but I'm probably going to add a little bit of my envisioning of what God's facial expressions are. This will be my interpretation of Exodus. Then the Lord told Moses, why are you screaming for help? Why are you crying for help? Did I not tell you that the Israelites will continue to move? Lead them with your staff, hold it high and the Red Sea will part for you so that you can make your way safely across. Go on, Is the Israelites will be able to cross on dry land. Isn't that cool? I absolutely love that verse, because can you imagine? The Israelites have been slaves for 400 years. Now they're escaping and here they've come to the Red Sea, which is this huge body of water. And Moses is at his wit's end and is just crying for help. Moses has hit a wall. A big wall. And doesn't know what he's going to do. And God says, why are you crying? Nothing is impossible for me. Just hold up your staff. The seas will part. And go on your way. Sometimes we cannot see over the walls in front of us, right? Sometimes the walls are there for a purpose. But the walls will have a door. And so many times God will put a wall in front of us. And sometimes God will have the door closed. Other times God will open the door and we'll know we're supposed to go through and proceed. One of the walls we have is old age and each and every one of us will have that. Another wall that we encounter is sin and the consequences of sin. We can look at old age as well. That's just my life is over now. I'm declining. I'm bored, I'm dry, or you can also take the view that old age is an opportunity to leap through the door into new opportunities, new experiences, new places, new ways to serve. You can leap over that the wall or the life is on the other side of the wall, not on this side. You know, you can look at it with the viewpoint that, oh, my body hurts. I've got these diseases. I have to take so many medication. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do the other thing. But no, because God says, hey, hey, y'all. He says, hey, you know, Sarah had that baby when she was well past the age of conception. And he did that with Sarah and Abram. And if he could do that with them, he could do that with you and I as well. Once God opens that door, just go on through. You can see Sharon's song this morning. That God is good. And God is in deaf ministry because even though we can hear God's, we don't hear God's word as easily, it's hard for us, right? Communication can be a barrier. It can be a wall, right? But God uses every single one. Every single one. The children of Israel, the Israelites, couldn't see past the wall of the Red Sea. They couldn't see to the other side. They were terrified. They didn't know what to do. 
because that Red Sea seemed like an insurmountable wall, right? I mean, for sure, we would just be petrified and screaming out in panic if we encountered that. It's a huge deal. You know, none of us have walked, have had to walk through a Red Sea. And can you imagine experiencing that? But God did open a door so that they could go, go on their way, just like he did with Sarah. She had the baby when she was old. Her body had already stopped producing eggs, but she was able to be impregnated and bear a child. God parted the Red Sea so the Israelites could cross on dry land. Because as God said, y'all, no way is your life older. Even you who are older chronologically, your life isn't over. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care if you got pain. I don't care if you've got some disease. I don't care if you're deaf. I don't care if you're poor. I don't care about that. God is saying, I am not finished with you all. There are so many, many, many opportunities for everyone. And God told the Israelites to go, to keep going, keep moving. You see this door opening, walk through it. Don't let your fear incapacitate you. Don't let your age incapacitate you. Don't let your perceived skill level cause you to freeze up and become blind. Look and see the door and walk through each one. Some of the Israelites did complain. They were murmuring. It says they murmured. And they'd already faced the wall of Egypt and God had opened the door for them to walk through out of Egypt. And here they were at the Red Sea. And some of them murmured and wanted to go back into slavery in Egypt. Don't do that, guys. Just don't do that. Do not do that. When you see the door in front of you, and you see it opened, go forward. Don't look back or go back into your old habits and your old ways. Just don't. Once the door is opened in front of you, you are beckoned to go through and you will face something new. But know that you will be walking through that with God. Trust God. Have the confidence and the knowledge that God knows what God's doing. Right? Nothing's too hard for God. Every time you move through a new door, know that Jesus is walking right by your side. Jesus is there to shield you. Jesus is there to, to destroy the enemy. Jesus is there to protect you to, and support you every step of the way as you move through that open door into whatever that new experience is. Maybe some of you think, yeah, but, you know, the devil puts the walls in front of us. Well, that's very true. There's a lot of, but some walls come from God too. Sometimes God will permit devil, uh, Satan to erect a wall, to wake us up, and to teach us a lesson. But God always has limits on Satan's torturing of us, or say Satan's berating us. Because God does have control over Satan, ultimately. And from the beginning, we have faced so many different walls in our lives, right? But once again, some of those walls were put there by God, and some were put by our enemy. Maybe you're wondering, how do we know which is which? How do we know if a, God, if a wall was put in there by God or not? Well, if it's a wall erected by God, that will create in us more strength to give God glory. If it's a wall put by the enemy, it will destroy us and lead us back into sin. That's how we know the difference between the two walls. Many times we erect walls ourselves that we run into, and we do it on our own. We think 
that God can't use us, that's a construct of our mind. We think we're too old. That's another construct of our mind. We think we're too poor. That's our own thinking. We think we're deaf, so we can't be used. We think we don't understand enough. That's wrong thinking on our part. Now remember, Sarah laughed. And the Lord said, you will bear a baby. And Sarah said, no way, God, I'm too old. I can't have a child. My body doesn't even work anymore. And Sarah laughed. So, you know, we do the same thing. We do the exact same thing. We decide that, oh, we can't make it past that wall. We can't see the church. There's a wall there. I can't do it. I can't get on Zoom. That's my technology wall. But all of us have had to learn how to use Zoom, right? And I've been very impressed at how hard we've worked and how hard Abigail has worked to get people connected. That has been incredibly impressive to me. And I want to thank you all. Because this coronavirus is a wall. But God has opened a door for us and said, come on through this wall. You're not going to stop worship. I've got a door for you. So come through it. You know, a lot of people have stopped worshiping at church because of the coronavirus. And that is tragic. Oh, so very sad. So very sad. Because God did provide a door that has opened for us to walk through. And we're going to continue walking through that door. We are going to continue worshiping. Even when we go back to the building, we will continue to have Zoom for our out-of-town folks and our folks who live out of state. We will continue to have that opportunity. So don't put a wall of your own making in front of yourself. Don't do that. Every time you erect a wall, that gives Satan great glee. And Satan says, come on now. And it leads us into depression. It leads us into low self-esteem. It can lead us into self-destructive behavior. And I want to warn you about all of those. In 2017, the highest, the suicide rate was most between the age of people between the ages of 45 and 54. The suicide rate was highest in that demographic. The second highest suicide rate was in people who were 85 and older. There were less in younger, less rate of suicide in younger people than in the older population because the older population always puts a wall up. They think they're worthless. They think they're too old. They think they're taking too much medicine. But you know what? Who cares about that? God gave Sarah and Abraham children. Be comforted. When you put a wall up of your own making, God will see it and God will put a door in that wall and say, hey, come here. God is always taking care of us, right? I'm sure God looks at us putting up these walls and doing it all on our own and thinks, oh my goodness, what are these folks doing? I'm sure God is rolling God's eyes. Uh, maybe God's laughing too. He says, why do they always put these barriers up? Why do they always put up these walls? And one more thing, one more warning for us. Make sure that you are not putting up walls for other people to run into. You know, we see that happening all the time. We see people saying, are you working on your doctorate degree? Pfft, why, you're too old. I've had a lot of people tell me that, believe it or not. I don't know what they're thinking, but. Hmm. You know, a lot of times people say, why are you adopting someone else? You can't afford to adopt all these kids. You guys are gonna be broke. 
or they'll say, you're looking for a better deaf school, so you're moving again? They say, oh, don't do that. Those are the walls we faced. People try to put walls up against our families sometimes that we've run into. You know, whenever people say, you're too old to work on your doctorate, I feel like that's a wall. But I know that I need to be beckoned through that wall. You know, a lot of times my family, good friends of my family would caution us about adopting. They would say, why? You can't afford this. Don't do this. And that would be another wall that I would approach and start to think maybe they are right. But then God would beckon me through that door as well. And so through it, I went. As we've relocated, my, oh, my husband's family was very critical of that, of us moving. They didn't think our deaf children needed a good education. And that was a wall that we approached. But God beckoned us through. And so I went through with it. So don't put walls up in front of other people. And my most famous thing, my most famous wall, I've told you this, is when God called me to preach, I put a wall up, a hugely, almost insurmountable wall. Because people told me that I was a woman and I could not preach. But, you know, then God did put the door in and called me through. But I ran away three for three years. Some of you know that story. I ignored that door for three whole years. And I missed out of three years. You know, I want to stay immersed in God's word. So I would encourage you to stay immersed in God's word, in prayer, in connecting with the church, and being where the Holy Spirit leads you. And anytime you see a wall, I want you to look for God's door and see if that's open. And if it is, Go through it. And if someone else put a wall, and if there's a wall there that's not from God, I want you to think, did you put that wall in there? Did Satan put that wall in there? And is this door being opened by God? And if you go through that, that door, if it makes your faith stronger, and if that brings God glory, then you know that that door was put there by God, and it's a good one to walk through. And that's a fact. You know, we cannot keep walking through God, those doors without being immersed in God. We can't do it. We have got to be connected to God 24-7. And then we'll know without any doubt the difference between right and wrong. Amen and amen. Now pray with, pray with me. Sweet Lord, we thank you so much for our life lessons. We thank you so much for the lessons that you are teaching us, that you tell us we are not too old. None of us are too old. We are not too deaf. We are not too health compromised. We are not too ignorant. But these walls are nothing to you, that you will use us. As long as we are here living and breathing on this earth, you will use our lives to your glory. Lord, do everything to help us see the walls and discern who put that wall there. Did I put this wall there on myself? Did you put this wall? Did Satan put this wall up in front of me? And to look at the door, to find the door, and see who's beckoning, beckoning us through. Help us not to think negatively about ourselves and our lives. Help us not to dwell on being unworthy. Help us to look at ourselves as your child. Help us to remember that you created us, that you love us. We are now known as children of God because we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we thank you for Jesus. Help us to notice, to know, to believe, to trust, and walk through those doors to serve you. And whatever you call us to do to serve, let us do it. 
regardless of whether we think we can or not. Lord, I pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, our light, our light. Amen.